Hello my friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, uh, predicted phenotype and traits of a Yamnan woman from Merike. Merike is actually located in Kazakhstan and this is the sample so in terms of the mitochondrial DNA it's U4, I'm not sure where that's most common today, U4. Um, I mean I've heard somewhere that you are European, um, typically European mitochondrial DNA. And like T is supposedly to be supposed to be uh, Middle Eastern. That's all I know. Like T is Middle Eastern and U is, is I think European, but I'm not sure exactly uh, how that works in terms of mitochondrial DNA. I'm not an expert on, on mitochondrial DNA. I haven't done much study into that into that field. Uh, this is where she is from. So uh, this is technically Kazakhstan. I mean, it's labeled as Yamne from Kazakhstan. But if you look at the location of this. You can see how close it is to Samara. So I've done videos on Yamnens from Samara, and in her case, she's—I mean, this is very close to Samara. Samara is right here. This right here uh, is gonna—it's gonna. Oh no, this is Saratov. Never mind. <laughs> okay, where's Samara? Oh, this is Samara. Okay, so Samara is right here. I was still—I was still mostly correct, guys. Uh, excuse my uh, my knowledge of Russian geography, but Samara and Meriki are pretty close to each other. So. You could say this is an extension, she would probably be similar to the Yamnens from Samara that I've made videos on. So let's begin with her phenotype, what did she look like? Uh, this is her eye color, and let's see the actual, the full Nashakot prediction, because besides the eye color, it gives you a lot of other stuff. So she's got black hair, 96% likelihood of black hair, definitely not any kind of light hair color. I mean, even the likelihood of brown hair for her is only 3%, so definitely not brown or any non-black non -black hair color. She's got a Greek-shaped nose, and she has got dark brown eye color. So in terms of the distribution for likelihood of eye colors for her, it's dark brown at 57.8%, followed by brown at 34.7%, followed by hazel at 72 and everything else is below 0 0.2%. Like, even even green eyes here are the likelihood of that is only 0.13%. So definitely doesn't have green eyes. Definitely doesn't have any kind of eye color besides brown. You can pretty much say you can rule out any eye color besides brown in her case. Um, she does not have BH2, does not have BH1, and what's interesting is she has two draft variants here, and this tends to be predictive of BH1. So it's kind of surprising that she has this this linkage in this region uh, but all of these variants are used in the calculation for the prediction of um, phenotype so take that into account all of them are used for the prediction of the phenotype none of, none of it is left out uh, so she does have BH4 she's heterozygous for BH4 which is very surprising because BH4 uh, you wouldn't once again I've, I've I've covered a couple Yamnans already and a lot of them had BH4 and this really surprised me because it's a stereotypically like Basque Southwest European stereotypically Southwest European um, mutation to have uh, blue eye haplotype 4 and like I just I don't know I wasn't expecting Yamnans to have it at such a high frequency but even despite having BH4 this is not enough to give her any kind of light eye color she still had brown or dark brown eyes pretty much despite this um, does she have SLC, derived SLC uh, 45A2? Yes, she does. So she does have derived variants in SLC 45A2. And is there anything else interesting here? So she does not have any derived variants in MC1R, doesn't have any ginger variants in MC1R, and she does not have the European hunter-gatherer uh, blue eye, red hair, pale skin variants. So okay, so she's, she's pretty dark, right? The impression we get from this is that she's pretty dark, Greek shaped nose, dark eyes, black hair, uh, and what about her eye shape? What is what is her eye shape like? So her eye shape is actually South Asian. She got South Asian eye shape followed by Estonian eye shape. So she looked pretty South Asian. I mean, South Asian eye shape, um, dark brown eyes, black hair. I mean, she's looking pretty pretty typical, like a pretty typical Indian. And uh, this is a very typical phenotype for Yamnans in general. They did look like. Uh, well, maybe not entirely like South Asians, but much more similar to South Asians than to anything in Europe. Now for hair shape prediction, she's got wavy hair texture, okay, wavy followed by curly followed by straight, and um, only 1% likelihood of kinky hair, but let's see how many SNPs that was done with. So for the, uh, the hair texture, this result has been done with 5, 9 SNPs, right? So based on these 9 SNPs, based on these 9 genotypes, you got this result, which is wavy hair. Now what about um, eye shape prediction? 
So for the ice chip prediction, this was actually done with quite a couple SMPs. This is 5, this is 10, this is 15. So 19 SMPs were used in this calculation for ice shape. Okay. Now let's move on to her traits. She's got AG and COMS VALMET variation, meaning VALMET genotype, intermediate speed of dopamine reuptake, and intermediate dopamine levels. She's got one warrior and one warrior allele. She's got TT in MAOA, which is actually uh, in MAOA's RS6323, uh, which is actually warrior genotype, more dopamine. And she does not have any no goal invariance in DRD2 pro frequency pro variations. I'm suspecting that her score for schizophrenia is going to be pretty high based on these genotypes right here. Uh, because, well, uh, my calculator doesn't really take into account these, even though I think it should. I think it should, but I haven't been able to find any scientific backing. My theory that what a year genotype would lead to a higher odds of schizophrenia. I haven't been able to find anything in the scientific field that would that would confirm my bias, so I didn't include that in the calculation, but I feel like she she would have an increased likelihood of schizophrenia based on this genotype right here. And she doesn't have the A1 allele and TAC1, so once again, a little bit more dopamine D2 receptor sites availability. And um, so doesn't have long form 5 htlpr she's got short form 5 htlpr just like most of you guys, a little bit of a trouble with transportation of serotonin, a little bit higher likelihood of depression. Not a carrier for European lactose persistence mutation and two variants for higher levels of empathy in OXTR. Uh, has CC genotype here, which leads to sevenfold decrease in risk of type 1 diabetes. Uh, not a carrier for hemochromatosis. And okay, so she's got TT here, which actually means two APOE2 alleles. So um, based on the genotype right here, we can already kind of make the assumption that she probably developed Alzheimer's at some point in her life. Uh, it's She's got a very high odds of Alzheimer's just based on this genotype right here. Okay, and no, oh wait, what, what, would you look at that? Okay, so she's got heterozygous genotype here, and she carries something I misspelled as micro P, but uh, it's really micro P, you know what that is? I'm not going to spell it out for you because it's YouTube, I don't want to be, I want to be all, you know, monetizer friendly, uh, family friendly, all that stuff, I'm not going to spell out what micro, micro P is, but you can make the assumption right now, you, you can pause the video and read it for yourself. So um, she's got TT genotype here, which means impaired muscle performance, likely endurance athlete rather than sprinter, and no fat gene variants in FTOs, RS9939609, so it doesn't have uh, increased risk of obesity, does not have photic sneeze reflex, and she's got AG here in S SCN9A, one variant for increased pain sensitivity, very interesting stuff. Okay, so for, um, for drug response, Average odds of meth induced psychosis, so gen um, heterozygous genotype here, and it seems to be much higher odds of uh, weight gain from taking Zyprexa for her. For albinism and atypical traits panel, does not carry any of the albino mutations, uh, which it would be really surprising. It would really surprise to me if any of the samples I make videos on did. Now let's check polygenic risk scores. What is she is going to score for that? For polygenic risk scores, she is scoring. A little bit below average odds of schizophrenia for Northern Europeans. Uh, below average odds of diabetes, type 2 diabetes. And as I've said previously, much higher odds of Alzheimer's. Why is that? Why is the 6.65% time, times the average odds of Alzheimer's? It's because of, let me scroll up. It's because of this genotype right here, where she has two APOE2 alleles. It's, you know, this is kind of like the big dog when it comes to Alzheimer's predictions. Uh, the APOE gene is... It's kind of like the HERC2 of Alzheimer's, right? If HERC2 is the main gene for eye color then, and hair color and everything else, then APOE is the is the HERC2 of Alzheimer's, <laughs> pretty much. Like, this stuff doesn't matter all that much. It doesn't have that big of a contribution to the result as this right here. Okay, so um, now we're going to check her ethnic calculator results. I have my own little oracle that I made for this, which, by the way, you should buy for $2.00. You know, if you want to, I'm not, I'm not gonna beg you, but if you want to, you can buy it for two dollars, and you can compare yourself to various people. So this is what she scores with uh, my calculator. She's closest to Mananians, followed by Tatars, followed by Media, uh, which would be uh, Iron Age Volga kind inhabitants. So after that come Georgians and corded wear from the Baltics. Let's see what she's getting modeled as. She's actually getting modeled as a mixture of corded wear from the Baltics plus Afghan, plus Mananian. Very interesting result. Uh, is this Does this reflect reality of what she is? Pro not so much, you know, not so much. But it's a calculator that I made myself. 
I coded it entirely myself. Everything is my work here. And that's why I'm showing it to you. Not because it's good, I'm showing it to you because I made it. Now let's see what she scores with um, Vahadu G25. This is G25 calculator, this is not my work. This is G25. And with G25, as you can see, she's basically a mixture of half Karelia Hunter Gatherer plus 37, 38% Georgian um, Caucasus Hunter Gatherer plus a little bit of a little bit of Turkish Neolithic farmer, Anatolian Neolithic farmer. So that's pretty much all there is to uh, this individual. <laughs> Uh, you might have been expecting GED match, and I do show uh, GED match in some of my videos, but I don't want to show the GED match here because it's kind of difficult to do, and I'm, you know, I don't want to go and prepare slides for you and talk about them as I typically do with my videos. So if you really want to see her GED match results, you know what? The file, the download link for the file is in the description of the video. As always, in every video I make, I leave the link to download the file in the description. You can download it. You can upload her to GED match. And you can see what she scores with GED match for yourself. That's what I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, thanks for watching my video until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Goodbye.